Hey guys, Tabby Cat Witch here again, and I've gotten a few questions about my digital coloring in the past, so I thought it might be interesting to sort of explain some common mistakes that I've seen in digital paintings and how to fix those. And by no means am I saying that I am a professional because I still have a lot to learn, but these are all mistakes that I personally have made in the past, and I've noticed that my art has improved a lot since I fixed these mistakes, so I thought that it might be helpful for some of you guys if I shared them. So what I'll be doing is I'll be demonstrating on two separate drawings. The first one I will be showing the mistakes that I've seen myself and other people make, and on the second one I will be showing how I personally have found to improve on these mistakes. So. The first problem that I'll often see, this is probably the most common, is the overuse of the airbrush tool. And while I have seen many wonderful artists be able to make really good art using the airbrush tool, oftentimes it, if you don't really know how to use it, it, uh, it just sort of removes structure from the drawing and can make the drawing look lazy because it just kind of blends everything together. Like, it just sort of keeps your drawing from looking very crisp and clean and sort of makes it look like you just sort of went the easy way out in terms of blending. And the second problem that I'll oftentimes see is that the shading and the highlights are just done in a darker version or a lighter version of the base color. and You'll oftentimes hear artists say that you shouldn't just do highlights with white or you shouldn't just do shading with black, but they never really touch on the fact that this sort like this sort of shading with black or white is still conveyed if you just use a darker or lighter version of the base color. So it's basically the same thing as that concept but it's a bit of an extension because if you like uh <laughs> I'm sorry but if you just sort of shade with a darker version of the base color it will oftentimes make the drawing sort of look very uh flat and kind of dead so you definitely want to try and use more colors whenever you're shading and a big problem that a lot of people also have is that they won't use reference when they're shading or putting in the highlights. And, I mean, there are a lot of artists who can get away with this, but if you want to make your drawing truly look finished and convincing, you do want to try and use reference because it does make your drawing look a lot better. So even if you're just taking a picture of yourself to get the lighting right, that is perfectly okay, you should definitely do that. And this is the last one, is one that I personally did not demonstrate in the drawing because it would have been very time consuming and I didn't want to necessarily deal with it. But I've seen, this is probably a very common one that I have seen a lot of people do where they will fully render one area of the drawing and just sort of leave another area very unfinished and this is mostly, like, a lot of artists will like to fully render out the face and render out the hair and then not really pay much attention to the clothing or the arms or whatnot. And this sort of gives a very inconsistent look to the drawing when it's finished because, and it makes it sort of look like the area that is fully rendered is sort of detached from the area that is not fully rendered and you, this is definitely not something that I'm assuming you would want to be going for in your art. So now onto the fixes, time to add a bit of optimism to this, but mainly, uh, this I sort of touched on this a bit earlier, but you should be using multiple colors whenever you're shading, whether it be traditionally, digitally, whatnot. But you should be using blues, greens, reds, purples, etc. Because it's sort of like, it makes the drawing look more expressive and lively. And in the same realm, you should be using uh, pinks, yellows, and cyans, and those sort of brighter colors to do highlights instead of just straight white. 
because unless of course the light source is white in which case it might be better for you to use white but if the light source's color is not necessarily defined or you're just doing a portrait or something like that I found that it, de it generally looks a lot better whenever you use colored highlights so and like I said before you should definitely use reference when you're shading just take a picture of yourself or find a reference online and you should have your detail be consistent throughout the entire piece so if that means just leaving detail out of the face and hair or adding more detail to the clothing and the rest of the body either way works it depends on what you want to do but just try to make sure that the detail is consistent throughout the piece and if it's not make it so that it sort of like is able to transition down through the piece so what I've seen some people do is they'll they will fully render the hair and the face and they'll like render the shoulder area a bit less and then just sort of have it like sort of blur off towards the end I guess in terms of how much detail they're putting in so by doing this you make the finished product look better because it's generally more expressive consistent and interesting and that brings us to the end of this video I hope you liked it and I hope it was helpful and if you have any other suggestions for future videos in the com uh, please put leave them in the comments and I would be happy to look at them and maybe complete them in the future. So yeah, I'll see you next time.